హలో మై డియర్ స్టూడెంట్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు మై టుడేస్ ఆన్లైన్ క్లాస్ ఆన్ డిఎన్ఏ ఫింగర్ ప్రింటింగ్ అదర్వైజ్ కాల్డ్ డిఎన్ఏ ప్రొఫైలింగ్ బోత్ మీన్ ద సేమ్ ఐఎమ్ డాక్టర్ మీరా బీకే అసోసియేట్ ప్రొఫెసర్ అండ్ హెడ్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ జువాలజీ మహారాణి సైన్స్ కాలేజ్ ఫర్ ఉమెన్ ప్యాలెస్ రోడ్ Bengaluru 1 you can see my mobile number so also email id after the class for any queries you can contact me either through my cell phone or through my email id you can see the schematic representation of dna fingerprinting or dna profiling which i am going to teach you in detail in next coming few minutes with this let us start our class now the structure of each person's genome is unique in the sense each one of us have the genetic makeup inbuilt which is unique for us you don't find any two persons with the same genome the only exception being monozygotic twins because these monozygotic twins develop from a single fertilized ovum and therefore even their genome is same but for these monozygotic twins the structure of each person's genome is different is unique this unique nature of genome structure provides a very good opportunity for the specific identification of individual like individual a has a particular unique genomic makeup which is not so with individual of b which is not same as individual b only if a and b are monozygotic twins then their genome will be the same so this provides a good opportunity to distinguish one person from the other thus dna fingerprint is an analysis of the nitrogenous base sequence in the dna of an individual you must be knowing that all of us have our dna in the cell and the dna is made up of four nitrogenous bases a t g and c ultimately the nitrogenous base sequence analysis gives you the dna fingerprint of a particular individual with this introduction we shall study the definition the use of restriction analysis to distinguish the dna of an individual from that of any other person is called dna fingerprinting or dna profiling restriction analysis is subjecting the dna to the digestion of restriction endonucleases okay and then analyzing the fragments so the definition goes like this the use of dna restriction analysis to distinguish the dna of an individual from that of any other person is called dna fingerprinting or dna profiling so to highlight i have used this option now it has to be noted that the dna fingerprinting technique is normally carried out by collecting the dna sample from a suspect and matching it with that of a reference sample from the victim of a crime if it is a forensic case or a close relative of that particular individual if it is a civil case okay namely the dna sample is collected the profile is developed 
and it is matched with that of a reference sample. This is what is done in DNA fingerprint. This technique involves the use of DNA markers and probes. So before going into the technique as such, you should understand two concepts. One is DNA markers or molecular markers and the other one probes. We shall study first them. Now, the DNA markers are highly useful for genetic mapping of the genomes. I will give the details in the next slide. Best example are mini satellites or VNTRs. VNTR stands for Variable Number Tandem Repeats. They are also called mini satellites. Okay. Now, so DNA fragments that can be used as a fingerprint in the identification or characterization of individuals is known as a molecular marker. See, normally there is a natural genetic variation in individuals as I was telling you and many genetic sequences are polymorphic meaning they differ among individuals. These molecular markers seek to exploit this variation to identify a particular individual or a trait or genes on the basis of genetic differences. Normally, we make use of RFLP, HDR or microsatellites, RAPD, SNP or point mutation, AFLP and SCAR. These are all the various techniques you know, wherein we make use of molecular markers. RFLP I have taught you, RAPD I have taught you, AFLP I have taught you, right? So, these most of them are, except for RFLP, most of them are PCR based techniques. Then, after knowing about molecular markers, you should know about one more thing that is probes. In conventional DNA fingerprinting, hypervariable and repetitive sequences like mini satellite or microsatellite DNA, they are detected with hybridization probes. You know, these probes can be used as a single primers in PCR to generate individual fingerprints. Gene probes, they are small single-stranded fragments of DNA that hybridize to target DNA sequences in a sample. Normally, they are tagged with a label like color or fluorescence. You know, they allow the researchers to identify a specific sequence of a DNA in a mixture. First, the DNA sample is heated to separate the DNA strands and then the probe is applied. So DNA probes are usually labeled for example either with radioisotopes or with epitopes or with biotin molecule or fluorophores to enable their easy detection. Okay, then These probes are of two types single locus probes and multi locus probes. A single locus probe is a DNA or RNA sequence that is able to hybridize to form DNA DNA duplex or DNA RNA duplex with a DNA from a specific restriction fragment on the southern blot. I will explain about southern blot little later. Right now you should know the definition of single locus probe. On the other hand, a multi locus probe hybridizes to a number of different sites in the genome of an organism. So you should have a clear cut picture of molecular markers 
and then you should know what are probes what are single locus probes and what are multi locus probes now see these multi locus probes mlp are normally used for paternity and immigration tests this is one of the major application of dna fingerprinting so if you were aim is to test for paternity and immigration then you can go for mlps but it requires several micrograms of dna and good quality dna and it uses the core sequence as a single primer then coming to single locus probe it generate simpler dna profile it doesn't need large quantities of dna normally used for forensic samples and please note these are locus specific probes all right so this is what you have to know about multi locus probes mlps and single locus probes slps now this ppt gives the schematic representation of dna fingerprinting i'll explain here the major steps involved and later each step i am going to highlight to begin with you should have a dna sample what all can be the dna sample i'll tell you little later you have to isolate genome from this from the sample you have to elute the dna this is the first step elution of dna then this dna is subjected to the action of restriction endonucleases or restriction enzymes as a result where all the target sequences are present there all the dna is cut you will get a number of dna fragments now you have to separate them for which you should subject them to the process of electrophoresis and in this case age age agarose gel electrophoresis see here the molecules of dna separate out based on their molecular weight namely long dna fragments with higher molecular weights move up whereas short dna fragments with lesser molecular weights they remain at the base and then same thing is transferred to a membrane nc membrane that is nitrocellulose membrane for southern blot okay in the diagram labeled 4 the blue one is actually the gel and the yellow one is the nc paper and uh, these bands are simply transferred position to position to the nc paper and then that is incubated nitrocellulose paper is incubated with labeled probes in the fifth step for southern hybridization and uh, once southern hybridization is over then the extra probes are washed off and the same thing is subjected to auto radiograph or exposed to an x ray film and you will get banding pattern like this and uh, the last diagram will tell you the dna profile of this particular dna sample this is what is exactly done in dna fingerprinting technique now let us study each step one by one in detail first one is sample what all can be the sample of sample for eluting dna wbcs in blood rbcs cannot be the samples because they are enucleate they don't have nucleus wbc in blood then cells at the root of a fallen or plucked hair if it is a murder case or if it is a rape case then semen from clots in case of a rape case vaginal swab of a rape victim skin fragments under the fingernails of a victim and sometimes even drops of tears all these can be samples 
for the elution of DNA. First step. Then second step. From this sample, the DNA is extracted. There is a separate procedure for that protocol. You make use of the enzyme proteinase K and dithiotritol. So you will extract the DNA from the cells. What are the what all the cells you can make use of? That I have told you in the step one. Then this DNA has to be purified, and this purification is carried out by phenol chloroform extraction. Several times it needs to be done. Phenol chloroform extraction. Again, there is a protocol for that. And this is followed by ethanol plus sodium acetate precipitation. So, you have eluted the DNA from the sample. Then you have extracted the DNA. Then you have purified the DNA. Then, the purified DNA is digested with one or many restriction enzymes in separate reactions. This I have told you. Then, the enzymes cut at restriction sites, flankening the mini satellites, that is markers, at several places to produce the fragments, DNA fragments. And uh, the digested DNA is loaded into wells in for age agarose gel electrophoresis please note now also this dna is double stranded only then third step in the protocol is electrophoresis and denaturation the dna fragments are separated by electrophoresis in agarose gel then double stranded dna has to be denatured to single stranded dna by soaking in NaOH. please note southern blot or for southern hybridization to carry out you need single stranded dna not double stranded therefore you have to soak in NaOH, that is sodium hydroxide so that double stranded dna is denatured to single stranded dna soaking in tris buffer neutralizes the gel so this is the third step electrophoresis and denaturation then you should go for southern blotting i will explain the procedure now and later will show you the schematic representation the denatured dna fragments are transferred from gel to a nitrocellulose filter by capillary action that is called southern blotting. I will show you the diagram a little later. Then the gel actually is placed on a filter paper wick on a sponge or on a stack of filter papers placed in a tray of buffer. Normally the buffer is high salt solution and the gel is allowed to imbibe the liquid. Then a nitrocellulose filter of the same size as the gel is laid over the gel. A stack of dry paper towels with a weight on the top of it is placed over the filter. Right now we remember this. I will explain with the schematic representation. Then capillary action pulls the solution up through the sponge gel filter and paper towel stock. This blotting arrangement is simply left overnight in the laboratory. The electrophoresed DNA fragments from the agarose gel are simply carried up on the replica of the gel. The nitrocellulose filter is removed and baked in vac vacuum at 80 degrees Celsius, fixing DNA permanently onto the filter paper okay this is what is done in southern blot then this southern blot has to be subjected to hybridization that is the fifth step now the nitrocellulose filter paper with the dna permanently fixed onto it 
is hybridized with a radioactively labeled probe. This is done by placing the filter in a boilable plastic bag which contains a hybridization solution and DNA probes which are labeled with radioactive phosphorus P32. Okay. You can design your own probes. Then this is kept, this arrangement is kept for at 60 degrees Celsius for 16 to 24 hours. The relatively higher ionic strength of the solution, that is hybridization solution, promotes hybridization. Hybridization in the sense these probes go and hybridize to the complementary base pairs on the DNA fragments. The labeled probes specifically hybridize with the mini satellite sequences present in the DNA fragments. You can use either single lobe probes or you can use multi locus probes depending upon the need. Then the filter is washed to remove all traces of the unbound probe, excess probe, then dried and overlaid with an X-ray film or autoradiograph. Then the exposed bands on the developed film represent the positions of mini satellite sequences on the agarose gel and please note these positions are individual specific, individual unique. That's how by comparing any two DNA profiles you can come to meaningful conclusions whether it is a civil case or it is a forensic case or a criminal case. Okay. Now this slide will tell you the schematic representation of uh, DNA blotting and hybridization. You, all the time, whatever I have explained, same thing is written here schematically. What you do is the green colored one. DNA extraction is the first step. DNA digestion with restriction endonuclease is the second step. Then running on age, agarose electrophoresis, third step. So you will get the agarose gel like this. This agarose gel is placed in that southern blotting vessel wherein at the base, you know, there is a tank containing the buffer. Above that you have a sponge. Above that you have to place this agarose gel, the green colored one. Above that you will place the nitrocellulose membrane of same size, the yellow one in the diagram. Above that you will put stack of paper towels and you will leave the arrangement overnight. Then the, there is transfer of DNA bands from gel onto the nitrocellulose paper. Then in the figure 4, step 4 you can see that uh, the NC paper is put in a sealed plastic bag which contains hybridization solution and probes, right? That is pre-hybridization. And here, probe preparation and hybridization takes place. Then, after 16 to 24 hours, leaving it here for 80 degrees, you will take out the NC paper, wash the unbound probe, then you will subject it to autoradiograph and then you will get the autoradiogram where you can see the banding pattern. This is what is exactly done in southern blot and hybridization. Okay. So after that next step is autoradiography. So the filter is washed and all unbound probes are removed. Then dry to overlaid with an X-ray film for autoradiograph. Then you will get the autoradiogram where the exposed bands on the developed film represent the positions of the mini satellite sequences on agarose gel. Okay. 
So now, after knowing the technique, you should know the applications of DNA fingerprinting. A very favorite question of paper setters, they will ask you to list out the applications of finger, DNA fingerprinting. They find use in analysis, you know, they serve as evidence, analyzing evidence at crime scenes, especially in forensic analysis. Then they help in identifying mass disaster victims. Say, aeroplane crash or something else, if 100 people die, you won't know which dead body belongs to which family. That time you can just isolate small quantities of DNA, conduct have the DNA profiles of these dead bodies, compare with the DNA profiles of their relatives, and then you can hand over correct right dead bodies to the right family. That is identifying mass disaster victims. Then it proves parentage in dogs for pedigree registration purposes. This is a commercial applicative value. Then it helps in identifying human cancer cell lines. Then it finds use in conservation biology, studying the endangered species. It helps in tracking tainted foods. It helps in studying the genetic ancestry of human populations. It helps in clarifying disputed parentage. It helps in identifying the correct father. Such cases are called medico-legal cases. So in medico-legal cases, it helps in clarifying the disputed parentage. Then, exonerating prisoners wrongfully convicted for a convicted of a crime it helps in the release of prisoners who have not done the crime so these are the applications of dna fingerprinting okay now what is the current scenario as far as this dna fingerprinting is seen see in the forensic analysis of dna the original techniques were based on RFLPs and VNTRs. And now nobody uses these RFLPs or VNTRs. They are replaced by microsatellites that is STP, Standard Tandem Repeats. Then the basic principle involves amplification of microsatellites by PCR followed by the detection. They don't go for restriction digestion but the analysis is based on the PCR, okay? Now it is possible to generate a DNA profile by automated DNA de detection system. Now everything is shortcut. You know, within a short gap of time, within a short duration, you can simply generate a DNA profile of an individual by automated DNA detection system. The way the DNA sequencing equipments are available in the laboratories, so DNA detection systems are available. You can simply give the sample and get the DNA profile of the individual within no time. Right now, this is the scenario in the field of finger DNA fingerprinting, okay? My dear students, Thank you for your patient listening. Any questions, you can contact me. Till then, stay blessed. Thank you.